Yo, what's up everyone? My name is Frankie Nuts and today I'm going to show you my 5 tips to improve your workflow in Logic Pro X. Alright guys, so let's dive into it. First things first, the fader tool setting. Normally you could do one and actually make a fade, but there's also another option. You go to preferences, general, go to editing, and then there's this function called fade tool click zones. Make sure that's enabled. And then once you're on a sample, now all you have to do, without any selection of these tools, you can just uh, drag the file here and you have your fade tool. Okay, second tool is the snap. So usually when you drag a file over here, uh, you will notice that it's not exactly always on there. So for instance, if I drag it here and I zoom in, it's not exactly on point 0.14. And that's because of the absolute value and re relative value in this menu here. What it means is um, sometimes when you have like a focal or something and it has a little bit of a, a tail or something like you want it to be off just, just for the feel, the good thing is to have it on relative value. So for now, when I move this to another position, it will keep that distance. So it's still this amount of distance. So that's kind of useful, but for Drums, for instance, hi-hats, you want it to be like exactly on the grid. So then choose absolute value and now it's fully 100% snapped and it will not go wrong. Okay, so next one is your track header components. Uh, so basically you do the right click and here track header components, you have a few more options that you can add to your bar over here. So a few really useful options are the on and off button so now you can actually put this on off. And what that means is normally when you mute something and you play it, it still has to render this sound even though it's muted because it's not like off. So now with this on and off button, you can fully put it off. But that doesn't fully solve the problem for your CPU uh, because you still have some plugins on there and it's not always just 100% off. So another trick you could do is right click, go to track header components, and there's this option called freeze. So now when you turn this on, and let's say you have an incredibly big chain here, like 10 effects and like a really heavy processed sound, which is taking a lot of CPU, press this button, and then when you press play, it will go and render the sound out, which means it's basically a bounce of the sound. So it's basically an audio file now, um, and now you can't touch anything. So when I move my mouse over here, you can see there's this little IC button and I can't click anything. Um, but the good thing is, if you wanted to go back into the sound, just press the freeze button again and now it's unfrozen. So now you can go back into it and go like editing and you know. Okay, so number four. In Logic Pro X, uh, you have this thing called the plugin manager. And I'm sure all of you are familiar with this thing because sometimes you have to open that up uh, when you install the new plugin. So nothing too special, right? But there's actually a really useful thing uh, in the category section uh, where you can actually uh, customize your own folders to how you would like to organize your plugin folders. Let's say you have one folder full, fully packed with um, all kinds of uh, plugins, like let's say the Fab Filter one, or you know, you have like lots of plugins, but you're only using three or four of them. Uh, then what you can do is make a folder, like here, call it let's say favorites, like I did already. And then in Fab Filter, you can just drag, let's say, the Pro L to my favorites folder, or the Sausage Fatner to your favorite folder, and you can create your favorites. Another thing is the original stock plugins, I'm barely using these. So you could actually remove some that you're not using by pressing backspace. I'm not going to do this because I already did that. Um, so now when I want to open a plugin, you can see on the delay section now there's only the sample delay. That's the only stock plugin I use from Logic for delay. So this way for me, this is much more organized and much more quicker. And don't be afraid to remove some plugins because Logic adds this little feature right here at the bottom when you customize your settings where it will still uh, show your stock Logic uh, fold-out menu. So don't be afraid to lose anything. Okay, so number five, strip silence. 
let's say you're doing vocals, right? And you're, the room you recorded it in still has some background uh, noise, or you created it by putting too many plugins on there and the noise in the background would just go up and up. And that's not what you want. So you could basically manually go and remove all these spaces but there's actually an option from Logic itself who does that for you. So if you press right click, let me see, split. There's this thing called remove silence from audio region. Or it's called strip silence. It's basically the same thing. When you press this, it will open up a menu for you. And it will automatically look for words and silence. So the, the waveforms that are <coughs> marked, he's gonna leave that untouched and all the things that are not marked, you read that as a silent. So for instance, now when I press OK, then you will see that the parts in between will be removed. So I press Enter, and now there you go, all the silence is removed. Back to this thing once again, uh, with the threshold knob, you can um, let the computer know what is silence and what not. So you can actually, let's say for instance here, there's probably a little bit of a breathing, you can make sure to include it or exclude it. And then you have the attack and release setting. This is basically just a fade so you don't get any clicks or pops. All right guys, so that was it for today. Those were my five tips. I hope it improves you to be faster in Logic and hopefully it helps you to create better music. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye.